come and join me uh, this morning. And uh, come on, guys. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you're the first, but they're coming. They're just slow. All right. All right. Dads, men, thank you for being uh, a part of our church. Uh, maybe you don't have kids of your own. You're very important to uh, the life of the kids here. I, I once served a church that had a, we had one of our men uh, never married. And uh, he taught school for 45 years, something like that. Um, was very active. He went on every mission trip. He cooked for us on mission trips. He cooked for us on ski trips. Uh, we go on mission trips and if one of the youth had a birthday the week that were on mission trip, whatever their favorite pie was, he'd cook for them. And, and you know, he he was just really, a, and I'm like, you know, he's not had children of his own, but he has been really a father to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids. And he was a great mentor in the church. So guys, men, thank you for your service in the church and service to the Lord, especially dads. Thank you all today. I want to ask you about some things. We're going to talk, the, the Bible says that we're to honor our father and mother. Honor your father. So we're going to talk about how you honor uh, your parents. Okay, so listen, if if somebody came in and we're going to have them to stand and they were a soldier, and maybe they had their uniform on, um, how would we, what's one of the ways that we would honor a soldier? Yeah, we might salute. Can, can you, y'all stand, can you stand up? Can, can you, can you look out there and, and give a salute? We've got folks that are served and can, can you give them one? Give them a salute. Pay honor to them. All right. Now, all right, you can be seated. All right. Just a moment ago, as the pastor, I prayed. Sometimes when we pray, we put our hands together. That is, a, we're honoring God, but we're also respecting the pastor, being quiet during the prayer time. So can you put your hands together like we're praying? You know, you know there, there's some reasons we do that. One of the reasons, hey, put your hands together like we're praying. One of the reasons we put our hands together when we pray, we're showing honor to God. But also, if I do that, I, I don't bother people because my hands are, are right are right here. Uh, we've got some school teachers in our church. And, <clears throat> How do, you, how do you show honor to a school teacher? Well, one of the ways is if you have, you want to answer a question or you want to speak, what, what do you do if you're in class and you want to ask a question, what do you do? Yeah, we, we raise our hand, don't we? We raise our hand until we get, uh, until we get called on. Until we get called on. You know, my, give you a little quick question story about that. I had a nephew and he'd gone to Fort Smith Christian. And at Fort Smith Christian you raised your hand, you got called on, and then you stood up by your desk and gave your your question. Well, he left Fort Smith Christian and he went to a public school. And he'd been there like two days. And he wanted to ask a question so he raised his hand. Nobody else was there, but he raised his hand. Teacher called on him, and he stood up, and all the kids laughed. And even the teacher laughed. And she said, what are you doing? And he said, well, that's how I was taught that you were supposed to do. That, that showed respect or honor to the teacher. Um, if you see a friend at school, maybe they're kind of across the playground, you know, at least you, you wave at them, and, and, and you're saying, you know, uh, that's my friend. I, I, I like them. And, and so you, you kind of give that wave um, to, to our friends. Okay, let, let's wave at our friends. All right. Can you give me a wave? Can you give me the, um, the, the, the homecoming queen? Or, yeah. 
Yeah, you know, the kind of the, the golf play, you know. That, all right. Or in, in, in Wyoming, you drove your pickup truck, and this was a way. Everybody that you met, that, that you acknowledged. And if you didn't, you were really stuck up. You know, and so you had to kind of watch that. Well, honor, to, to honor, when the Bible says to honor your father and mother, to honor your fathers, it, it means that we are doing something that shows that we believe that they are important. So let me ask you this morning, somebody, what, what is something that you can do to honor your father? What? We can pray for them. Right, you can pray for them. Great. That's right. You can pray for them. Somebody else, what can you do that, that honors your father? But what, what can you do? Give them a card. You, you, you can give them a card. You can, you can tell them, Daddy, I love you. Hey, listen, I want you to know of all the things that you can do for a daddy. Crawl up in their lap and tell them, Daddy, I just love you. That that really isn't that right, Dad? Doesn't that doesn't that sound good? We we love that from our from our kids. And and so let, let's let's honor our parents, okay? Let's let's work on honoring them. Let me pray for you today. And uh, just uh, lift, I'm going to lift you up to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these boys and girls. God, I thank you for allowing them to be here. I pray that you'll give them a good day in their home with their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen.
This is the command, the statutes and ordinances. The Lord your God has commanded me to teach you so that you may follow them in the land you're about to enter and possess. So they've wandered and they're about to go into the promised land, that land flowing with milk and honey. They're about to receive what God has for them and they're given some, some instructions. Do this so that you may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life by keeping all his statutes and commands I'm giving you your son and your grandson, and so that you may have a long life. Listen, Israel, and be careful to follow them, so that you may prosper and multiply greatly because of the Lord. The God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words that I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Remind your children of these things. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorpost of your house on your city gates. Very important. Remind your children of some special things. Now, how do we teach? And we're kind of given a way to teach. Don't just send them to church. Number one, take them. Dads, don't send your kids to church. Take them to church. But you know, it's not just at church where we learn about God. Matter of fact, he said, when you sit down, now when, when do we sit down? Well, a lot of times, the only time we sit down is the family when we're getting ready to eat. Do you pray? Do you pray when you sit down with your family to eat? That may be the only time that you sit down together as a family. But he says, remember, God, when you sit down and when you walk along the road. Now, we don't walk along the road very much. We drive down the road. Do you, do you ever, while you're in the car, do you talk about things of God with your children or in front of your children? You, you rehearse those things, what God's doing in your life? What God's doing in your family? When you get up in the morning, for, you know, send them off with, with a prayer. Bind them on your hand. Let them be a symbol on your forehead. And they, they would take little pieces of scripture and would have them tied onto their hand. Or, or they would take all little boxes that they even tied to their head. And, and as a reminder, they'd write them on the doorpost of the house and I think that this can be taken symbolically what do we say sometimes we're going to I need to remember that so what am I going to do I tie a string on my finger as a reminder uh, nowadays we don't do that we we put it in notes on our smartphone. You know, they, they probably think at, at the grocery store that I'm wandering through the store looking at Facebook. I'm not. I'm looking at notes. Marla tells me what to get. Sometimes she sends it to me in, in an email. And, but, I, but I make my list. So my Sunday school class, they were talking about compromise, and I asked my class, are there certain things that you're not going to compromise about a brand? In other words, what is it that when you go to the grocery store, you're not going to buy great value? Well, I know one of the things that I'm not going to buy great value, and Marlo sends me to the store, we buy French's yellow mustard.
You say, why? Because Marla said, Steve, buy French's yellow mustard. So that's, what, that's what I buy. And uh, I, one day, I, I thought I'd done well. I did price matching. And I found the mustard that was the best price per ounce. And I bought it, and I took it home. And Marla said, that's not French's mustard. I said, but it was, no. And so now she'll send me the message. French's yellow Mustard. So I, I go along and, and I have my list and notes and, and as I put stuff in my basket, I erase it. And I know I'm done when I erase the last item. You know, we, we, we need to find ways to remind ourselves of some important things from God. And so just a little acrostic. Three points. I don't have a poem. I'm sorry. I should have, I should have got a, a poem to go with this. I do have three points. The first one, that first D, Dad, remind us of some things that we ought to do. Now let me hasten to say, maybe you're here today, and this is Father's Day, and we've talked a lot about fathers. Maybe you say, Brother Steve, my father is absent from the home. Brother Steve, my father is not a godly man. Listen, the Bible addresses that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, God says, And I will be a father to you, and you'll be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. The Heavenly Father said, I'll be a father to you. Amen. You'll be one of mine. So God doesn't leave us fathers. He'll be a father to you. But that first deed, what are some things that we need to do? God, I didn't have a whole lot of jobs that I was supposed to do at home when I was growing up, but I had one. When I came in from school, bring in the trash cans. Now, I don't know why that was such a hard thing to remember. I mean, I came in, I, I, I came up our driveway, the trash cans were laying there. You would think that would be enough. Pick them up, take them in. Man, there are a lot of times I didn't remember to do that. Daddy wouldn't remind me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes I got reminded strongly. Sometimes the reminder would be when he'd leave on Friday morning, don't forget to bring in the trash can. I don't know why that's a, a, a thing that has just kind of stuck with me so much that when we've got, we've got a new rule for the last umpteen years on trash day you take your trash bags and you put them up at the end of the road and the trash man comes and picks them up well that works real good except there were several people not going to name any of them but there were several people that never paid for trash pickup. But every Friday they put one, two, seven, eight garbage bags up at the end of the road. Which meant that those of us, my mom and daddy, started paying 30 years ago for trash pickup. And so for 30 years, they're paying for trash, and there were some houses that never, ever, ever had paid, but they had the benefit. And so what they did, they said, we're not going to pick up bags anymore. It's got to be in a can. And you've got to have a sticker that has your account number on there. And so you have... So now we don't just take the trash bag up. Now we've got to take the trash can up. 
which means you got to bring the trash can back in. And, and I think about my daddy a whole lot when I stop to get the trash can. Dad, did you notice I brought the trash can back? Matter of fact, I usually pick up my brothers because I'm there at the truck, and, and so I'll stop and put those at their house. I hope Daddy's watching. <laughs> you know, there are certain things we ought to do. Number one, well, to acknowledge God. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He's reminding the family, reminding the children to acknowledge God with all that you have. Matter of fact, what did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your soul and all your strength. Dad reminds us this is something we ought to do. To remember God. And in verse 10, when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he promised he's going to give you, don't forget. Remember that he says, a land with large and beautiful cities that you did not build, houses full of every good thing that you did not fill them with, sisters that you did not dig, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Be careful not to forget the Lord. I had the great privilege when I was in Wyoming that after about two and a half years, God gave us a church building in Crawford. We'd met for two and a half years in a storefront. I, when when you, you guys that came out and did a mission trip to Wyoming, we were still in the storefront. And we are praying. We thought that we were going to buy a piece of property and build on it. And we thought we had the property in mind. And one Wednesday, the Cody newspaper came out, and there was my property. <clears throat> and the city had just bought it to put a new jail on. And I was like, well, that blessed my heart. <laughs> and I did what every good Baptist does. I had a little pity party. Wednesday night showed up, and, and everybody that came to prayer meeting were like, well, there went that. We're really bummed. Thursday. I'm sitting in my office, which was, I took my boxes of books and turned them on their side and put my books in because I didn't have bookshelves and, and made a little cubicle and that was my office. And I'm sitting in there and I get a phone call. This is Pastor Steve. Yes, it is. Pastor Steve, this is Lou Ann. Got your name. You, you don't, probably don't even know who I am. I go to the South Fork Christian Center. Yeah, I've seen that place. So, you know, we've not had a pastor for two years. We've decided that it wasn't God's will for us to exist any longer. We voted last week to close the doors to the church. Well, I'm so sorry. So, you know, we've got a building, actually two buildings, auditorium that seat over 100, education space, little kitchen, and five acres. And we own it. We don't owe anything to anybody. It's ours. We've got to dispose of that property. Nobody left can make any benefit. So we'd like to give it to your church. Now again, I'm Baptist. And I, I said, well, we would love to do that, but you know, I can't make that decision. We've got to have a business meeting. We've got to call our leaders. We've got to call our people together. We've got to vote, we've, but we want it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got off the phone. And then, Miss Jackie, I was very unbaptist. I had a little shouting time. <laughs> it was private, but I shouted, praise the Lord. Now, it took... Two lawyers, about six weeks to make all of that happen. But several weeks later, we moved in. We had our first service in a building that would accommodate us. Five acres didn't cost a penny. Matter of fact, the two attorneys, somehow God got a hold of their hearts. 
and they both volunteered their services and didn't charge us anything. Man, that's a miracle, amen? I'll never forget the first service. There was a sound system. There were forks and knives in the drawers over in the kitchen area. We had a tambourine. Now, we're Baptist. Nobody knew how to play it, but we had a tambourine that was left there. And I preached out this passage. When you move into a house that you didn't build, eat from gardens you didn't plant, be careful lest you forget the Lord. And you say, look what we've done. And I warned our people, we've got to be careful that we don't think that we're something. Dad, remind us to remember God and to worship God. In other words, Dad, remind us, and you remind us of the things to do, remind us to go to church. Remind us to live for God. Verse 14, do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you, for the Lord your God, who is among you, is jealous. In other words, he's a God who says you can only worship me. Which shouldn't be hard because he's the God that brought us out of slavery, who brought us out of bondage, who, who we've moved into this place and we've got everything that we need and we didn't do anything. It's just here. Live for God. Verses 17 and 18 says, do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. Some of you remember way, way, way back in the 70s. 70s. When Arkansas got a new football coach. A little lifting guy named Lou Holtz. First year had a fantastic season. Culminated with the Orange Bowl against the mighty Sooners. <laughs> and nobody gave us a chance. Our three best players were left home. Remember that? There's some of them, they, they, they tried to bring a lawsuit to be able to, to play. So what they do? Well, here's what Lou Holt said. We have rules for our players. And they've got to fall. And the last rule in the books is do right. You know, I just call it my do right rule. And everybody knows what it means to do. Just, just do right. You know, God kind of has a do right rule, doesn't he? And we, we know what, when the Bible says do right, do what's right and good in the Lord's sight. Do we really need 20 rules about what do right is? No. Brother Raymond, when you go to camp, you take the kid, you've got rules, you tell them, listen, but you also kind of assume that they know. Look, it, dress decent. Well, what does that mean? You know what it means. Right, I've had kids before ask, is, is this okay? Now, usually they ask that because they know they're kind of skirting real close to the edge. They know. Just, just do right. Dad's remind us to put God first in our life. These are things to do. Now, how, how does Dad 
remind us of that. He doesn't. And we watch and we see how he, and we know that that's, dad gets up and goes to church. We know that's kind of expected. My whole life growing up at home, I watched my dad every Sunday morning. He'd sit there, here's his cup of coffee, here's his piece of chocolate cake, if it was a good day, and, and that's breakfast. And he'd have his Sunday school book laying there, and he's kind of reading his book and drinking his coffee, having a piece of chocolate cake, and he made out the envelope for the family. This was mom and dad's envelope, had their tithe in it. Here's the envelope for the kids. Where's your 50 cents that goes in here? But he had the envelope made out. How, how do we know how to live? How do we know what to do? Because we watch Dad. Dad reminds us of these things. And the A of Dad for me today is to give an answer. Dad lives and Dad shows and Dad teaches and Dad reminds us of these things that we're to do. And then there's a response for us. How do we respond to authority? Children, honor <coughs> your father and mother. One of the ways that we respond to the way that dad lives is we show honor. We obey him. It's always, you know, it's always right to be nice and to honor and to give that honor. I think I shared this Wednesday night. You know, this last week, Southern Baptist Convention met, had a the largest convention in several years, 15,000 plus people gathered in Nashville. And uh, there's a hotly contested race for the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Al Moeller was one of those. He's the president of Southern Seminary. He was one of those that was uh, announced to be running. Uh, Ed Litton won. That Ed Litton was my guy. I wasn't there to vote for him. I would have voted for him if I'd have been there. I just think he has the right heart that we need right now. I think it's proven. Now let's give Al Moeller some credit. There were four that were running, but Al Moeller, right after the election, and he lost, and Ed Litton win. And Al Moeller on his Twitter account tweeted his support and prayers in anything that he could do for Ed Litton. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's losing rightly. The next day, uh, there, I think it was the next day, maybe two days later, there was uh, the report of the six Southern Baptist seminaries. Each president got up, they gave a report of the seminary, here's what's going on. Do you have any questions for me? And people could ask questions of the president of Southwestern and, and the president at Midwestern. And, and, and so they could ask their questions. And they tried to answer them. Al Moeller gives the report of the seminary uh, for Southern. Uh, there's a question time. Somebody asks a question. All of a sudden, you know, they say like, yes, microphone 2B, do you have a question for Dr. Moeller, and guess who was standing at microphone 2B? It was Ed Litton. And he said, I really don't have a question. I hope I'm not ruled out of order. I just want to say that I'm so thankful for the way that Al Moeller has led as president of Southern Seminary and, and, and what he means to Southern Baptist and how he... What an honor. Amen. Amen. Publicly, to honor rightly a person. Folks, look, we need to learn a little bit about what it means to honor. And, and our answer to father and mother is to honor them. Now, I've had people ask before. I've had them come and ask them. Say, Brother Steve, my My father's not honorable. What do I do? 
You know, God kind of gave me this. Here's rule number one. Don't dishonor them. They're not a Christian, that they've not lived right, that they, they've, they've been an absentee father. What, don't, don't dishonor them. It may be hard to know how to honor a, a father like that, but don't dishonor them. God's not pleased for us to dishonor them. You know, we answer authority with respect. So parents, Be respectable. Moms, dads, live in a way that earns respect. You be respectful. And if you live respectably and you're respectful, then demand respect from your children. And children show respect. Man, listen, I, I had I opened an experience. You that, that teach school know this much better than I. But I remember when, when Benjamin was playing a little league ball and I was helping coach. And I'll never forget one day that this kid had done something. I don't even remember what he'd done, but done something. And the coach said, Run to that pole and back. No. At that point, I had never heard a kid on a football team, especially elementary age, tell a coach no. I was fearful. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> I knew what our coach would have done. Listen, I know James Wagner, insurance guy who taught, coached us at Evans Boys Club, I never heard anybody say no to him. He would have run them until they puked. <laughs> or he would have said, Tomorrow, don't come back. Don't come back. I, I was flabbergasted. I, I, fellow I talked about today that, uh, that had taught for, for 45 years was telling me, he said, he said, I can still teach except for a few. He told me, he said, so I had this girl, <coughs> high school. Every day she sat in a different chair. Now he had a sign to see him. So every day, he was like, that's not your seat. Would you please come sit where you're supposed to sit? No. Parent-teacher night comes around. Her mama comes to parent-teacher's night. Now, she's there because she's a little upset because her daughter had been sent to the office so many times. And she asked, what's the problem? And he said, well, I have assigned seating in my class. There's some reasons for that. And she doesn't want to sit where I'm assigned. And Mama looks at the teacher and says, well, why does it matter where she sits? <coughs> And he said, well, one of the reasons it matters is because I assigned that seat to her. And I'm the teacher. And he explained some of the reasons why they had assigned seat. And, and Mama never did understand. And he said, I knew that day we're going to have a long year. Because if Mama has no respect, daughter's going to have no respect. Parents, teach your kids respect. And you know the way you teach them is you have respect for authority. Honor your parents. You know, in Proverbs chapter 23, let, let me just read a couple of scriptures to you. Set some reminders. In Proverbs 23, 
Verse 22, listen to your father who gave you life, and don't despise your mother when she's old. That's a good reminder. Verse 24, the father of a righteous son will rejoice greatly, and one who fathers a wise son will delight in him. Verse 25, let your father and mother have joy. And let her who gave you birth rejoice. Now, get, live in such a way that your parents enjoy being your parent. <laughs> I, I read that, the, the father who gave you life, I remember, uh, remember the Cosby show? Remember what Bill Cosby said to Theo? Son, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. <laughs> My daddy kind of had that approach sometimes when it was needed. <coughs> Honor your parents. That's the answer that we give. And then finally, the, 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 the third letter, uh, another D, done. Remind us of something that's done. Say, what, what do you mean by that? Well, in verse 21 of chapter 6 in Deuteronomy, when your son in the future asks about these things that are on the doorposts, these things that are attached to your forehead, these, these things that you talk about, remind them We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out. So we'll see, what, what does that mean for us in the New Testament? Dads, remind your children that John 3.16 says, For God the love, loved the world in this way, he gave his one and only Son. So that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It's done. Dads, remind your children that Jesus died that we might be saved. Not because we're good, not because we deserve it, but it's done by him. Let's pray together that every head bowed and our clothes. Dad, there are things that we do. Children, they're, they're, we respond with an answer. And our salvation is done by Jesus. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you'll come. don't have the numbers in front of me, but last year or so, I, I heard the statistics. If dad gives his heart to Jesus, and there are children in the home that are not saved, within a year, 80% of those kids will come to Christ. Oh, Dad, you, you, you've got a great role to point your kids, and to point my kids, and to point our kids to Jesus. You that have done that, there's a great reward for you. You that are here today and you didn't grow up with a dad in the home, just remember God says, I'll be a father to you. You'll be my children. Give your life to him. Lord Jesus, I pray that will honor you with our lives and all that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. We're